Hey everyone. Hi guys. I hurt my leg. I did. Uh, I did. hurt it bad. So, and then just in time, we're going to talk about staying healthy on the road for nomads, even at home, campers, and camping is a big deal too if you're not used to being a nomad and you're out camping. So we're going to talk about that. Oh yeah. So I hurt my leg and I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Um, and no, I wasn't drinking, but we're going to talk about drinking. <laughs> I don't drink. No, she doesn't. No, about maybe three times a year. But I do want to talk about drinking because that is a major issue for all of us. And especially people get retired. We kind of kind of settle into it. Do you think? We kind of settle yeah. in and think, well, we're nomads and we're out boondocking. We're, gonna, we're all got the campfire. Um, I remember my dad did when my parents they started traveling they had a fifth wheel and My dad didn't drink my family never drank. That's why I'm not a drinker. My family didn't drink But I remember that my mom complained that once they start camping and start traveling I think they were with the scapies or something like that. They start drinking a beer a lot. So if you are drinking I want to um, just let you know some facts about drinking because I read about this years ago and a lot of you are females that watch this my demographics tell me that a lot of you are females and this is for males too but especially I'm going to talk to you females that drinking alcohol and being female is not a good match it's not a good match at all because regardless of your gender excessive alcohol use can have negative health effects and I'm gonna read this no. because these are my notes and I'm not gonna pretend like I memorize <laughs> this okay <laughs> I've seen people do that and it looks ridiculous or looking down and looking up now I got my notes and um, but there are really harmful consequences for drinking a lot of alcohol now women have a unique physiological and hormonal variables. Therefore, women are generally more susceptible to the effects of alcohol than men. This is what I heard years ago that they've done research and women, um, women alcoholics die very, they get really old looking and they die very quickly. Yeah. And one of the reasons is we're smaller, but I always thought, well, what is the where? What is the physiological issue that makes it so difficult for women um, when they drink alcohol and and it just affects them so adversely? Um, it just alcohol effects last longer in women, according to the NIAAA, which is the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse. There's three A's. And alcoholism. <laughs> okay, okay. I think that's it. Women are the fastest growing population of alcoholics in the United States right now. Isn't that and amazing? This, yes. And this was a uh, 2021 statistic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Women are drinking a lot more than they were in past. I mean, women have always drank. I, maybe women, maybe way back, they kind of hit it, do you think? Yeah, but That could be. Yeah. Women, and here's the reason, women carry less water in their body and more fat than their counterparts, the males. Since fat does not absorb alcohol, women absorb more alcohol pound for pound. So it's going to affect you even harder. Women's bodies take longer to metabolize alcohol mm. because there is less digestive enzymes to break down alcohol in a female body. And isn't it true that with women, it takes less alcohol to have an effect on them as well? And I think these are the reasons right. that that is so. Right. Men have more water in their body than women. That's that's fact that's science that's you know textbook we have more fat though but fat does not absorb the alcohol and we're not talking about overweight or obeseness 
Right. We're, we're just, just yeah. normal makeup of a normal woman's body. Yes. There's more fat. Yes. So why am I talking about this? Because I want to talk about health. And I just wanted to bring this to light. And I'm going to talk about more other effects of, or we are going to talk about more effects of alcohol for a nomad. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of accidents that are going to be happening out there. That's why I said, no, I wasn't drinking. I was cleaning in, in his van. It's and, all my vans. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know. Step. I know. We were out camping and I, we were all cleaning. Well, remember the day I did the video cleaning and I thought, well, I still have a wet rag and I came over and I didn't realize that the, you know, I'm, my van, if I'm in there, I just step down into the ground, but his is so much higher. I scraped my leg. Oh. It's not, then it, not pretty. No, and it's bruised. I mean, it's okay, but it's see how quickly an accident can happen. Now, what if I had been drinking? I mean, out here, I'm out here boondocking, drink. Oh my gosh, I could have. I because we talked about this because he saw it happen, and it was shocking. <laughs> I was looking around. Well, they, I heard the scream is what I yeah <laughs> or the the uh, shout of pain whatever right. it was yeah well i caught myself on the edge now what if i what what if i and because i'm almost 70 it's easy for a 70 year old yeah. to just fall backwards and she's yeah. going to hit her head on a rock there were rocks all around big rocks yep. and it could have fallen in and or i could have if i didn't have a good balance i could have literally broken my shin yeah. because i do have some bruising still still bruised um around in my foot area but yeah it came down to my shin then it scraped up and i i cut it and yeah it doesn't hurt so bad but it's still pretty bruised yeah. and it's like i knocked some um what some capillaries in there could be oh, okay <laughs> well anyway so but no i wasn't drinking but what if somebody was drinking and they just fell oh my gosh so that's why we're talking about this health thing. But I do want to remind all you females out there that uh, drinking is a major ager. Ma oh, major ager. I like that. Yeah. Major ager. <laughs> <laughs> At your service. Um, yeah. I mean, you're going to look old before your time if you're drinking. And sometimes they say even one drink is too many drinks. Yeah. So, and then there's other effects like up here. Interestingly, men drink typically to enhance the positive. I'm not so sure about this, but I think in times past, maybe you might agree with this. I don't know. You might think it's sexist. I don't know. But it said that women typically drink in response to negative feelings. Interesting. What do you think about that, Paul? I think that's very true. Yeah. Uh, you want to go out and have a few with the boys and yes. have a happy time yeah. and think yeah. positive thoughts. And, and it's not necessarily true with with a female who could be home or in her rig yeah. uh, drinking by herself, for instance. Not well, some a, women do go, go out and drink like men. Let's well, go out sure. and have you know, a few beers or yeah. a few martinis or whatever. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. I don't know if that's true or not. It seems a little sexist, but could be true. And it says, women who drink often, all you out there drinking often, it says, statistically, you have an increased chance of a mental condition causing psychosis and psychiatric mental issues. Yeah. Uh, creating negativity in all of your life, in every area of your life. So it can create negativity in all areas of your life if you drink yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. Yes. And it can create the mental issues. So I wanted to um, bring that to light for y'all. And I know that that might actually um, create a discussion in the comments. What do you think oh, about I that? I think it very well could. Because it is already, it's, it's, it's textbook. Alcohol has a more... Um, negative effect on females than it does and i just like to say lee yeah. that, and and everyone yeah that i'm not a uh, innocent uh, here uh okay there was a time in my life that i had four five oh, yeah. six cocktails a night Ooh, that has totally turned around
Yeah. And I am so much healthier. Oh, wow. I feel yes. so much better. My yes. attitude is so much better. Oh, yeah. Because if I have three beers in a month, yeah. You know, it, it and once in a great while, I, <laughs> I, I developed a liking for almond flavored tequila that it can only be uh, picked up in Mexico, unfortunately, at least the kind that I had. Yeah. And once in a while, I'll have a finger or two of that, if you will, you know, that tall, uh, just for whatever reason. But my bad habit of drinking, at least, has gone away. It, it's, and I'm not patting yeah. myself on the back. I'm just saying Pretty that sure. I had a problem with that stuff. Yeah. And thank God it, it has been yeah. ushered away, if you will. And so this stuff isn't just for women. This, this is definitely affecting men as well. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I just, the reason I'm, I'm addressing it for women, because I remembered this, and it came to my mind when we were talking about, I was thinking about, well, yeah, this is the Back to Basics series. And this is Back to Basics on health. If you are healthy, you are wealthy. There you go. If you don't feel good, you're going to have the worst day if you don't feel well. If you have something seriously wrong with you, I mean, how, how, you're not going to have a good life. So your health really is your wealth and it really determines your whole future of how healthy you are. Whoops, there we go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that goes for, it, it's not just a serious illness. Uh, as a lot of you know, I had a cold. I'm sure it was yes. a cold. It wasn't uh, COVID uh, uh, number four or whatever. But I felt rotten. Yeah. And being cooped up in a van when yeah. that's why I yeah. I exited the stage left for what about a week. Yep. And just I didn't want any. I didn't want to do any videos. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted <laughs> to get off and say, "Oh, yeah. woe is me!" And I felt like crap. Yeah. Um, and it was magnified because here I am in this van. Yeah. And kind of cooped up and so and, and I don't care if it's a cold or a broken leg it's terrible yeah it just is so much worse if yeah. you are a nomad and you right. have a very limited space to live in it's really important that's why this is a back to basic healthy how to stay healthy as a nomad For because sure. we're in this small space we've got to stay healthy it's even more imperative. It's not like we can just go crawl in bed and turn on the air conditioner, you know? Right. Or run down to the kitchen and just quickly turn on the gas and make a cup of tea and go back to bed and crawl under the covers. No, we have to get out the stove. We have to do all this. So we don't want to do that. Um, and so we tend to maybe avoid doing all those little things that might be good for us if we don't feel well yeah, so just, let's all stay healthy just makes the situation worse in it, many does. Cases. it does it yeah. does so let's go on to um well, since we're talking about alcohol um what do you think do nomads this was a question when we talked about do nomads do you think typically abuse alcohol or not or do you think nomads would be less likely than bricks and sticks to I, abuse alcohol i feel that nomads what should i say know better <laughs> i think <laughs> this so is too. not yeah. any shocking news revelation we yeah. all know that things are going to be just much terrible than more terrible than they actually are if we get sil uh, ill or if we uh uh, have a, uh, uh, a, a bad scrape on our shin and I a know. bruise on our, our uh, yeah. ankle and uh, can't walk quite right or whatever. It, yeah. So I think, you know, we're, we're people that know better. And I think that in yeah. the case of nomads, it, it, yeah. it's less of a problem. Do you think I'm right? I and I have no way of knowing. What tell well, me what you think on on your comments? What do you think? Do you think nomads would be less prone to to uh, drinking, or like you know, well, like in the case of my dad, I mean, he was what in his uh, you know mid sixties, and he I guess he started drinking beer after beer, sitting around the campfire with the guys, <laughs> you know, where he never drank before. I mean, maybe 
you know. I think when they played cards, my mom would make frozen daiquiris or something like that, uh -huh. and they would have a daiquiri. But literally, my dad was not a drinker. My mother either. Mm. Nobody in my family really drank. Okay. Yeah. But let's talk about the effects um, the, with the law, <laughs> the consequences, okay? Now, some people do get away with, with drinking and driving, and they might slam into cars or something <clears> and then, it's, you know, run away from it. Yeah. I mean shame on you when you do that you know but there are people that do do that but the most people do get caught while they're drinking excessively you know okay a dui is the most costly one your first time first now second time over the scale but first oh. time six thousand dollars it all adds up Alaska, Air California, Arizona, Utah, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Massachusetts. All as it brings up about six thousand dollars to get caught driving with a DUI. Um, jail time depends on the state, but usually, uh, on average, it's about three days in jail. That device that you breathe into now that's eight hundred dollars right off the bat. But then it has to be installed. There's a charge, and then it has to be uninstalled when it's when you're done using it, and higher insurance. And that device so is over and above any fines that are issued by the court. You have to oh, pay yeah. that that uh, yeah. for that gadget out of pocket. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, the yeah. installation and mm -hmm. the removal when you finally uh, yeah get out of yeah. uh, uh, that stipulation, so to speak. So, therefore, nomads, ha nomads have even more reason to avoid alcohol than the general population because we have our rigs. And we're doing a lot of driving. Right. And what if, see, the only, I got a scooter around here. <laughs> this is real time. This is real life here. <laughs> um, the only time, that, like I said, in courtside, maybe like three times, I would have like a Mike's Lemonade. I kind of like those. But it was when I knew that there was going to be people around and maybe there was going to be drinking. And I thought, well, I'll partic participate today. And um, But I knew I was never going to drive. Because when I'm parked in a city or anywhere, I could be asked to move. And since I don't drink much, oh my gosh. I just seem to be swerving all over the place. And if you are, if you get that tap on the window yeah. and you have alcohol on your breath and yeah. you've got your keys in the ignition. Oh, yeah. No. You're done. Yeah. You are done. Yeah. I never leave them in the ignition anyways. But, yeah. So, basically, like I said, I drink maybe three times a year. Seriously. In fact, I did get... They come in a six pack of the Mike's Hard Lemonade. I still have three. I just carry around. Oh, that three was lasted in last year. Do they have course, an expiration I, date on those I things? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so if you come in contact, and here's one reason I know that we had talked about this. One reason why I wonder about nomads is nomads can be more secretive. They really can. I mean. If you live in a neighborhood, I mean, you kind of go in and out of your house, right? Mm. But if you're a nomad and you want to be a recluse, you can be a lot more recluse. Yeah. You just, yeah. if you don't like that area, you move. And if you don't talk to other nomads and you don't have family, you literally can become like an invisible person. Yeah. So my point is, if you see somebody who seems to be recluse and you might even suspect to see them drink a lot, you know, they're, 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 they could be up for, I mean, I don't know what you can do about it, but I just thought I'd say it. I don't know. Um, there are secretive nomads out there that are just kind of slipping under the radar with everybody, even other nomads. They don't, you know, want to talk to anybody. And so, yeah. well, that's our session on the alcohol. And I wanted to bring this up. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but it can be real serious for women. Who drink and they can end up doing really negative things to other people because they can become like psychotic it just affects them if they drink every day every day so oh. yeah cut it off cut <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> well, let's talk about one thing that many nomads do many campers do and that's campfires 
That's one of the things that can be so dangerous. If you've been drinking, Yes. Or if uh, you don't have sufficient light around and you trip on a rock and yeah. things of that nature, it, it's, uh, and if you break a bone, whether it's a wrist, an arm, a leg, you've got a real problem if you're a nomad. Well, you're out of the game well, for a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah, you're out of the game for a while. You could, oh, you could just sprain your ankle walking back to, from the campfire. Yeah. Absolutely. So drinking... There's a lot of drinking going on around them campfires. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can stumble on your way back. But you need to have a flashlight. Absolutely. So always have a flashlight with you. And Paul, um, we have another through night flashlight. We do. And so we might as well just present it Talk right here. Talk about that right this now. This is a really cool flashlight. Oh yeah, go it ahead. Is. Let's yeah. let's show it. No, Do you care our, if I show it? No, not at all. Our friends yes. from Through Night yeah, through sent night. us another That's flashlight great. to I review, know. and it, it is called the Through Night Archer Pro. And I dropped my notes. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you need help finding them down there? I, I, well, <laughs> okay. that would work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This little light, I actually I've been carrying the same light for oh a year. Something, yes. something like that yeah. and it's shorter than this one mm -hmm. and it's fatter than this one yeah. and I always carry it when I'm wearing shorts as opposed to pants so I always carry it in the lower pocket of my shorts yeah this fits just perfectly into that pocket Wow. otherwise the, the flashlight I was using would pull the pocket down and it would look oh, bad and yeah. you know whatever but I really like this one. The yeah. shape, the uh, yeah, and it uh, fits really the length, nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, and it has five different brightnesses. Everything from Firefly. <laughs> Sorry, people. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Actually, that was Turbo that you just saw. <laughs> Whoops. Turbo. Go and it goes down to Firefly. Uh, including a strobe setting, which is yes. great for trying to blind a bad guy that might be giving you a hard time. <laughs> and one thing I do want to mention, this, unlike some of the other uh, through-night flashlights, has a tail switch. If you could show that, Lee. Yes. There it's, you go. It's right there. And immediately I had a concern because I keep this in my pocket face or, or, or light side down. I thought, well, what if I hit that button that is in the tail? Yeah. There is a lockout feature. You can lock this out so that you have to have a lengthy double tap in order to unlock it, and then it'll, it'll work just like you want it to. Yeah. So there's no danger of you having this thing in your pocket and having it be on all day long and you not be aware of it. Yeah. There is that lockout feature, which is really nice. And one thing... If you would unscrew the cap here, Lee, one thing that they have done, they have replaced the, they used to have a rubber covering over the recharging, I think that's the way that goes up, mm -hmm. yeah. over the recharging slot. And by the way, this is USB-C yeah. for faster charging. Yeah. And this is great because when you want to charge, you unscrew that, and it only it does not unscrew completely off. It only goes a certain uh, yeah. uh, height and stops. So that is very nice. So it'll charge faster, and then yes. you can screw this back down to cover that yes. slot so that it doesn't get dirt and grime in there. Very good, Lee. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm the attractive assistant here. Yes, yes. she is. Now, I, can I mention that the, these are? this is different than a regular USB that we're used to. And so we um, we have a few of these now, but if this would be your, you buy this and this would be your first one, hang on to it because the other USBs do not fit in there. And this is USB-C. Right. And right. it does power up faster. Yeah. So, yeah. And I know we, we all have, if you get a lot of uh, uh, USB powered gadgets, you get all kinds of cords. I but know. it's Keep really a nice feature that that uh, uh, recharges very fast yes. as opposed to, to a regular USB. Yes. Uh, the flashlight is IXP8 waterproof. And that means that uh, designation means that down to two meters. 
uh, which I think figures out to more like uh, uh, three yards, something like that. Okay. It is waterproof. And a really nice feature from Through Night yeah. is that it has its two year free, totally free, no freight back, no freight back to the uh, owner, free replacement warranty, which is really super. Yeah. And it does have a 100, about a 150 yard distance uh, maximum. 150 yards is a one and a half football fields, folks. It's it's yeah. that's a bright light. Would this be perfect for taking because it's so small, taking to the campfire? Oh, absolutely. And putting yeah, putting yeah. it in your pocket. And yeah. since you're holding up that clip, Lee, yeah, that does have their standard two-way clip. Right. You can either slide that onto the bill of your cap, or, or I, of course, it, use it to yeah. slide into my pocket yeah. and secure it into my pocket. It's a two-way clip. Right. Yes. It is now available on Amazon for thirty-nine ninety-five retail. Okay. And I have been using it uh, a little bit less than a week now, and I love it. It's oh, a great yeah. light. I love my flashlights, and you need to love them for safety, if nothing, no other reason. Right. That's for sure. Well, you were flat. You told me you were like a real flashlight connoisseur. I can't explain it, but I love flashlights. I know. I, I do all kinds of flashlights. And so, are you a through night person now? Because yeah, absolutely, you, I'm. I think they're great. Yeah. These flash, these small flashlights have so many lumens in them. Why would you carry a big flashlight anymore? And the the uh, lights that I used in in my previous life, if you will, before through night, were all battery operated. They might have been rechargeable batteries, but then you have to yeah. unscrew the thing, take it out, put it in the charger, wait three hours yeah. and put it back in. These USB lights are so simple. And this does have a uh, LED light to tell you if it is, the charge is getting low mm -hmm. and if it's uh, time to charge it up. And then when yeah. you put it on the charger, it'll come up uh, with a blue light, I believe it is, to let you know that it's fully charged. So yeah. USB is the way to go as oh, far as exactly, I'm concerned. Oh, exactly, yes. Yeah. Well, so what other uh, safety features might we talk about? Well, I do want to mention one time, and I do know, back to the alcohol thing, um, I remember Max and I and Carmen. Hey, Max. Hey, Carmen, if you're watching. I was, uh, way before I met you, we went to this party. Um, it was on, on Quartzsite, and there was this, uh, uh, it was a group, a Facebook group. They were all having a meetup. So they were going to have a little party. So I thought, oh, that sounds like fun. So we yeah, went. Meet some people, meet whatever. Meet some huh? people. Oh, my gosh. This group. <laughs> they were. This <laughs> one and so, um you know, Max doesn't drink at all. No, no, no. And I don't mm. drink. Carmen, she was not in. She's not a drinker. We were just watching this like, oh, my gosh. Well, it got later on. And this one, uh, a female was so drunk. And she almost fell in the fire. She did. So uh, it, it, it can makes happen. Me, it makes me cringe yeah. just to think of I know. That. I know. Yeah. So, okay. So. Staying healthy. What about medications? If we're already on medications. Now, let's talk about our medications. I take no meds. I no longer take meds either. Yes, he's off meds. Now, we're not suggesting everybody get off their meds. Just get no, off your meds. No. But he wanted to get off his meds, and he did. And you are med with, free. with the help of some very special supplements, you know, don't don't think I'm a witch doctor or right. am seeing one. Right. But... but uh, I uh, uh, carefully watched my blood sugar and my uh, uh, blood pressure, blood pressure yeah. thank you, and just slowly got myself off of those things. And yeah. of course, exercise and working yes. out has helped a great deal also. Oh, yeah. And losing 40 pounds didn't yeah. have... Uh, and you don't drink anymore. No. I mean, nothing to write home about so, putting in your journal, you know, yeah. 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 So, Paul is really getting very, very healthy. And But if you are on medications, what advice do you give? Because I've never been on medications. I take ibuprofen. Uh, well, anybody leg, that you know? is knows that you have to have regular visits to your doctor. Okay. Um, they have to do that to make sure that, that uh, they're prescribing the right drugs for yeah. you. Um, and, uh, however, there are many different companies that 
will do an online or on the phone uh, visit with you and some actually will do the prescriptions that you need okay if you want to go that route okay um, you know and there of, of course uh, uh, it, what is the name of it RX something or other it's an online uh, uh, I think it's web RX as a matter of fact I'm not sure okay. I'm right on that but yeah. there are many different ways to get your meds without having to go back to your domicile state and have an appointment once a year or if, even every six months yeah. with your uh, primary physician so look into those ways uh, there are a lot of them out there and I think they make life uh, very uh, uh, easy in that way especially for a nomad I'm talking right. about. So we wanted to look up um, and did we find an online medical advisor? Because now there are actually more of those going on where you can go online and you can talk to a doctor. You can even do face to face with a doctor if you're having any issues. Right. And there are. There okay. are many. One of the first uh, when I did a Google search, I Googled okay. it and did the Google search. Yeah. And one of the first sites to come up was the top nine online doctor visit services or something like that online the top nine yeah well what that tells you is there is a lot of them out there right so but, i think what we'll do because we didn't have time to talk about we had some things we had to do so sorry um apologize on that uh we would have had that more prepared but we'll leave them in the in the comment good idea. maybe some yeah. ideas um that you can do for online um advising sure, of your sure. any medical they are out there question, and yeah. available yeah exactly now um as far as like exercising you know i'm an advocate yeah and you know i've got the videos <laughs> up there and minimanly.com so i know so yeah um exercise we got to keep going and with that exercise you had um wanted to talk about the silver sneakers Silver sneakers. I always yes. want to say silver slippers, but that's not right. <laughs> I know, I know. But I found out when I first got my uh, uh, Medicare and got a Medicare supplement policy. Yeah. I found out that they cover this silver sneakers company, and I could get into Planet Fitness. I could get into the gym we were using uh, free free of charge. I just had to prove that I had Medicare. I uh, had to prove that I had a Medicare supplement program that provided silver sneakers. And it's fantastic. When, yeah. I, when I was paying, what was it, 27 bucks a month to Planet Fitness to yeah. get a black card so I could use it all over the country. Now it's I can use it at Planet Fitness mm -hmm. and at a wide variety of different gyms. Yeah. Well, last I know there's so much. Well, there's so much we could be talking about. But first, okay, there are a couple more things. So, I forgot. I, I got to keep moving around. You're so patient with us. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys so much. Um, we're out camping and it's just, it was a busy day today. And we just want to get this information and keep these going for you. So, And I'll say it even though she won't. She doesn't feel the greatest today. I hope I, I didn't give her any bugs of any kind <laughs> or anything, know. but she, she's I don't know. she's about a half a bubble off plum, <laughs> should we say? I know. And uh, and then my she's leg. A here, let me show you my leg. Let me see if I can get this up here and get it in here. See, it's some bruising around. Oh, you can't. It's starting to go away. Oh, no, you can't. But I scraped it here. It's still swollen, and then it scraped. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh well, you have to see it. Okay, so I want to talk about hiking. I have a friend, Max, and he does, we've, you've heard that name before so many times, but he's into hiking. And he wants to just do simple hiking, and he's very careful. He doesn't go beyond his limits. So I want to mention to you that if you do want to do any hiking, and you haven't hiked in a long time, don't go beyond what you know your limit is. And you can really hurt yourself and be out of the game. And it can be quite dangerous, too. Oh, yeah. So these are some things. I just want to mention it. You need a hat. You need sunscreen. You need sunglasses. You need sturdy footwear. 
You need thick socks. You need layer clothing so you can take it off, maybe tie it around your waist as you need to. And you need water and you need high energy foods if you're going to go out, even yeah. simple hiking. For somebody 75 and you're not used to it, it can you can get yourself into some dangerous situations. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the other things we need to mention are the food that we eat. Yeah. Uh, especially, I have an ice cooler. I'm yes. still thinking this way and that way about getting a 12-volt refrigerator, but yeah. I haven't done it yet. But you've got to be really careful about yeah. spoilage. Yeah. Food spoiling. Food in poisoning cooler. will yeah. take you down worse than a broken leg for a oh, short period it. of time. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's just And can terrible. you imagine having diarrhea? In your in your rig? I don't even want to think about it. Well, I've had it before, <laughs> and it's not fun. <laughs> it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. yeah. So you have to check your coolers out. You have to check your ice often, and you have to check your food to make sure it's not spoiled. If you've got dressings or you know older eggs, meat, anything like that. Anything with mayonnaise in it, right? Right. Especially. Yes. And another thing too is. Don't overeat as a nomad. Don't overeat. It's miserable. You're miserable inside this small, small space. And so overeating is just, you're not going to feel well. No. You're going to feel sick. You're going to feel sick the next day. And another um, advice, too, is just kind of stay away from sweets a little bit. Not, I'm not saying, oh, never eat sweets. Because I do. We showed the candy no. the last time we had them, no. but we don't eat it very often. Maybe yesterday we each had like one piece and that was about it. Yeah. Yeah. We're really, really being good about those, you know, but we and like to have it around. As far as overeating goes, mm. guilty. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It was just a couple of days ago and I don't know. It, it was just one of those days and I ate and ate and ate. <laughs> I was so miserable in I the evening. It. I finally I went to bed at like eight fifteen, eight yeah. thirty, something like that, because I couldn't do anything to get comfortable. Yes, it's it's just I not know. worth it. And so, a word to the wise and to myself. Yes. Uh, don't overdo, man. Yeah. And lastly, really, one of the most important things. Water. Water. You know what? It's. It's so easy to forget, forget. that that <laughs> sip Whoops. of water, and it's it's critically important, especially if you're at a higher altitude, or obviously out mm -hmm. in the desert, yeah. or hiking. Yeah. You need to take that bottle of water and use it. Oh, yeah. Get it down the hatch. One of my problems is, I think, yours, so we drink it first thing in the morning, right? Do you yeah. drink your water first yeah. thing in the morning? And then throughout the day, we kind of forget about it. So yeah. we've got to remember yeah. to drink our water. Oh, yeah. Get it down the hatch. These are reminders. We're getting back to basics. These yeah. are things we know, but things that we um, we kind of throw in the back of our minds and we don't bring it out and, and do these things. And if anything else, this is a good reminder for y'all about these things. And, and uh, especially with the drinking, just if, if you notice yourself maybe going up, 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 yeah. pull it back. Pull it back. Who and you know we spend money on like face creams and everything, but then we drink, and we drink to excess. Females and then we we age. Um, female alcoholics look bad. It's yeah. a bad look. Yeah. It's a bad look, and it's also a bad behavior too yeah. with females who drink a lot. So and that certainly goes for guys as well. Yeah, and it really does. What Lee yeah. said that these are reminders. Please, I hope you don't feel like we're preaching to you, you no, know, no, just that we don't do any wrong and you shouldn't either. No, no it's not that no, way at all. Not Believe at all. Me. So, okay, well, we love you guys and we just want to bring these little pointers. This is just number two, back to basics series of being a nomad. So, we we'll love you guys. We'll continue going back to basics. That's yeah. right. And yeah. if you're thinking about being a nomad, um, how to live in a minivan, the minivan leeway on Amazon and uh, get it. I think it's um so much information in there yeah and talk about back to basics it's fantastic I've, i know it i bought that book right away made lists you know, yes. got a notebook as was uh, suggested in the book yeah. made lists made things yeah. that i had to pick up and and uh 
uh, things that I needed, things that I didn't need. It's, it's an invaluable book. It really is. Yeah. Okay, so, well, I guess we'll go sign out now. Yeah. Till next time, number three of Back to Basics. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.